Over the next couple of videos, we are going to look at a couple of small practical examples where we will see how we can apply flex basis, flex grow and flex shrink. Now, the idea of those videos is to show you a more um, a more kind of real scenario, how those values could be, how those settings can be useful, because I would expect at that point that there, there's still some of you who don't really feel some satisfaction in the terms that you have really um, grasped that thing or you still think you still consider it to be somewhat um, confusing. So I think those those practical things sometimes can uh, can clear stuff up where you can at least see, ah, OK, I can use it um, in that way. And and I hope it will have um, this effect. Those examples are by no means um, complete or try to represent, uh, I don't know, some some particular way how you should work you should just see that this is kind of one way how you could how you could use those properties now the way i've set this up is i prepared some small uis for each of those examples and you should not care about all the stuff that is happening in those uis that's not that's not the point here. Now just, just take them as they are and let's just focus on the mostly one thing that we want to achieve. Now, you might notice that I have some kind of hate-love relationship with um, with those kind of animals. And just because I needed some kind of theme, um, I, I took them in here because I found some more or less, um, more or less funny images. So let's just accept that someone gave us this kind of um, layout. And what we want to have here is some some cards. And let's say that those are, I don't know, you can choose your hero cards or you can choose your enemy cards or whatever else cards. Like you just have a collection of cards and you want to have some description of your cats um, and some content um, on this card. Now, let's just see what kind of content we might have. I just um, I just changed the visibility here. So let's just make them visible. And so you see we have some, some thumbnail image of our cat. Is this actually really round? Yeah, it should be. Okay, so we have um, some image of our cat and some content. And now that's not really super important. Now the point here is, let's say that we also want to have a footer on all of those cards. So let's make the footer visible. That might be, I don't know, the name of the cat. And let's do the same thing with the second, with the second card where we also have an image, some description, and we also have a footer. And now we already see probably we don't want to have those footers um, kind of distributed like that. What we don't like about them is those elements are, are having a column orientation and so they just put the content one beneath the other and then obviously the footer is kind of jumping, um, is kind of starting where the previous element, element ends. And that way we have those footers always some somewhere else on each of those cards and we we don't like that that's obviously not nice so now what what i would like to do with those examples is not to only think about them as um they solve this one problem in this one scenario so when you will make a cat game with cat cards just in this case um, you can apply what i'm going to show you but rather Let's try to abstract this out and let's just try to name what problem are we actually trying to solve. Now, the problem we are trying to solve is we are having some kind of element that we actually always want to be, I don't know, at the beginning or at the end of some, some containing element. And we want the, the rest of the content kind of to push it either to, to the bottom, like in this case, because we, we would like the footers to be on the at the bottom, obviously. But that would also apply if you would um, have a row-oriented container and you would like to have something to be pushed to the side. So when we think about um, the stuff we covered so far, 
and kind of um, think, do we have the means to solve this in a in a very simple, simple way, just by the things that we covered? Um, now, obviously, there would be several ways how to do that. Um, but just with but just with things that we covered in the previous chapters, what we could think of is, OK, so basically I'm having two elements here. And now the thing that I would like this element to do, which only has its default um, properties, is it would be nice if this element could grow as much as it needs um, or no, not as much as it needs. This, that's actually wrong just as much as it can because if this element grows as much as it can this will should automatically put the footer in the right position so the only thing that i will do is you know let's just look at this in the hierarchy here i'm having a card and the card only has a content and a footer element and now if i set a grow of one for this card element now we can see we reach exactly what we wanted because now this content is stretching as far as it can and it's automatically putting the footer to the bottom. One important thing here, however, is that you cannot do the same thing with the footer in order to reach this result. You cannot set the footer, um, you do not like to set the footer to grow because then they will start to compete for their space. And what you would like to have is to the, for the footer is to have a fixed height basically so we set a fixed height on the footer so the pattern that we are actually having is we have one element with a fixed height and we have a, another element that is kind of automatically deciding how much space to use which we give a grow property of one and that makes it grow as much as it can in order to preserve the height of the footer. And the effect is that the footer is pushed um, to the bottom. And now if we go to the second card, now you see obviously uh, this in the second card, this content is covering less space than in the first example. But when we set the grow to one, we get exactly the same effect. And now we have both footers nicely aligned at the bottom. So let's try to summarize this as a kind of pattern. I don't know, let's call this the, the, the footer pattern. When you have a collection of elements like our cards here and you want some of those elements to be nicely aligned, all you have to do is to give the container, so the card, some fixed size. Now you can see they have a fixed basis, in this case of 300 pixels. I should maybe rather give them some percentage value, but this doesn't matter here. The card should have some fixed size. Now this card has the same size, obviously. And now if we want to put, we want to push some elements or align some elements um, nicely, in this case at the bottom, all we have to do is take, um, take the other element that is covering the rest of the space and give it a grow property of one. And obviously, again, this would also work um, when you would like to have cards that are stretching um, horizontally, or if you have something else, not, not cards, if you have a header, if you have um, both a header and a footer, in all of those cases, this would work. The only thing that you need is a fixed size for the parent element, or not even a fixed size, but the same size for the containing elements, one element that has a grow set, and then the element that you want to be pushed without a grow and in this case with a fixed um, with a fixed height this might also be a fixed width if you go horizontally but that would kind of be our pattern now you could obviously achieve a similar result setting other things like uh, some web people around you might know that you could do something with some mod margin auto stuff like that but we are not touching that for now and what we are actually trying to do is to restrict ourselves to set as few properties as possible and since we were just working on basis shrink and grow to solve as many problems as we can with just using those three properties so let's see what else we can do in another example